now we will know, try to know what are the pollen units the pollen units are the result of meiotic division in the pollen mother cell the pollen mother cell undergoes meiosis and it forms four cells uh, that is are haploid in number and as a result of this meiosis four cells are uh, formed that remains united at the young stage at maturity they get uh, separated from each other and uh, as a result four cells are formed and they get detached from each other and uh, they behave as independent pollen but in many other families uh, there are many families in which the pollen uh, grains remain intact or joined with each other and that forms a pollen unit in most of the angiosperm uh, pollen grains are found as monads or solitary unit but there are about 55 families of angiosperms in which pollen occurs uh, as dioid or polyoid polyads the pollen units include the monads dyads tetrads polyads masculi and pollinia now uh, we will discuss one by one what are the monads dyads polyads and masculi and pollinia so monads after the division of uh, the pollen mother cell uh, each cell uh, each pollen uh, unit gets separated from each other and each cell behaves as a uh, pollen grain they are independent uh, as we can see in this uh, diagram that there is a solitary uh, cell so this uh, cell is called as monad uh, sometime it happened that uh, uh, after the cell division two cells uh, remain uh, joined with each other uh, such type of pollen grains are called as dyads and uh, uh, this is a characteristic of family podostemaceae uh, in which the pollen grains are found as dyads then another category of uh, this pollen unit is tetrads tetrads uh, are formed uh, after the meiosis uh, that four cells are formed and the four cells remains intact with each other in a different pattern uh, there are about uh, five type of uh, this uh, these tetrads that is tetrahedral tetrad isobanditral tetrads, T-shaped tetrads, uh, linear tetrads and uh, this uh, decussate uh, tetrads. In tetrahedral tetrads, the all four pollen grains are united in two different planes like a tetrahedron. Uh, we have seen the, uh, the structure of this uh, uh, diamond. Uh, in tetrahedral uh, tetrads, the pollen grains are also arranged like uh, the diamond. Uh, we can see the in diagram A that three cells uh, are at the front side and one cell is at the, at the back side. That is fourth cell is at the other plane. Uh, the family is winteraceae. Drosaceae, Ericaceae, uh, these families have uh, uh, to the example of tetrahedral uh, tetrad. Then there is isobilateral tetrad. Uh, all four pollen grains are united and arranged in single plane like a tetragon. Uh, this uh, diagram B is showing the uh, tetragon like structure. Uh, that is all the cells are present in the one plane then t shaped tetrad uh, the t shaped tetrad are formed uh, as a result that in the first division pollen mother cell is transverse followed by a vertical division in one cell and transverse in second one uh, as a result 
the T shaped structure is in the upper cell there is a vertical division in lower cell there is a transverse division as a result of that the T shaped triads are formed then uh, next uh, category of the triad is linear one in which uh, the plane of division is uh, the plane of division is the transverse as a result of uh, that all the four cells are uh, arranged one above the other in decussate tetrad in this category the paired pollen grains are united and arranged uh, at right angles to each other uh, in this diagram uh, we can see that uh, two cells are arranged like this and two cells are arranged like this uh, so uh, in decussate tetrad uh, they are united and arranged uh, arranged at the right angle to each other now come to the polyad the polyad uh, are the structure which have pollen units more than four uh, polyad uh, have a number of cells in them uh, in multiple of uh, just 8 16 32 or 64 which remains together after maturation these type of found in about seven angiospermic families like Anonaceae, Mimogaceae, Thalestraceae, Gentianaceae, Aselpidaceae and Orchidaceae. So they are also result of meiotic division but uh, number of cell is up to uh, more than four and up to 64. Then next uh, pollen unit is Masoli uh, and Pollinia. The Masoli are uh, the polyads which have uh, number of pollen grains which are larger than uh, this polyad means uh, the number of cell uh, pollen grains reaches up to the 132 164 or more uh, it is found in families like mimogaceae and uh, periplocaceae now uh, pollinia which is a uh, very interesting a uh, structure that is characteristic of characteristic of family Aselpidaceae and Orchidaceae. In Pollinia, whole content of anther is bound together by thread of clear, sticky substance in masses and form a structure called Pollinia. So, number of pollen grains in Pollinia is much higher than uh, the Masoli and whole of the pollen grain are uh, discovered by or we can say the bound by a thread like structure called uh, visin uh, thread like uh, sticky substance uh, that forms uh, this pollinia in acylpidaceae the two pollinia are united to, uh, by two arms retinaculum or caudical this one from here to here this is called as retinaculum or caudical this is retinaculum or caudical these two are joined to the uh, structure called as corpusculum that is called as central gland uh, and uh, which is attached to the uh, stigma in combination these structure salt guides are called as translators uh, this cortical and corpusculum they are called as uh, translator apparatus Flo this pollinia is a product of meiosis in single anther and is transported as a single unit by insect uh, so you can see uh, this pollinia in uh, uh, anther of the sylpidaceae and this uh, when <coughs> the insects visit to the uh, this anther of uh, or the flower of Aselpidaceae family they uh, take out this pollinia and transport it to uh, other flower where the pollen grains are get uh, released and they perform the process of fertilization now the next uh, interesting character of the pollen grains is polarity 
the pollen grains may have uh, polarity or may not have polarity so uh, first of all we should know what is polarity polarity is actually defined as spatial differences in the shape structure and function of the pollen grain so as we know that pollen grains are mostly circular elliptical or of different different shape so they have two poles uh, one is proximal pole one is a distal pole and uh, uh, there is a difference between proximal pole and dif uh, this distal pole and this spatial difference uh, that is in the form of shape structure function ornamentation and that is called as uh, polarity almost every pollen grain has some sort of polarity which is responsible for the specialized shape and structure of the pollen grain so uh, we know that every pollen grain have uh, polarity and this polarity is responsible for the special shape and structure of the pollen grain according to the uh, polarity the pollen grains may be apolar cryptopolar and polar so uh, the uh, pollen grains may be apolar that is they don't have polarity cryptopolar that is uh, bit in between the polar and uh, apolar polar one have clear polarity cryptopolar have uh, polarity but uh, at first uh, by seeing that you cannot say that uh, they have polarity but clear uh, uh, when you observe uh, pollen grains uh, close observation reveals that uh, they have polarity polar pollen grains may be isopolar heteropolar or polar yes three type of polarity uh, is observed in the uh, polar uh, pollen grain so uh, now we can uh, discuss uh, the different uh, polarity in a polar pollen grains poles cannot be distinguished and they are released from the tick tracks means uh, by close examination you cannot distinguish uh, the polarity clear polarity in a polar pollen grains because they don't have any type of polarity in cryptopolar uh, pollen grains the first appearance seems to be a polar but close examination reveals more or less distinguished polarity example are larix and pseudo uh, pseudo sugar uh, these are the plants that show the cryptopolarity means uh, first appearance uh, in first appearance you cannot say that they are uh, up polar or you can say that they are polar are polar but uh, when you um, examine these uh, pollen grains uh, close examination then uh, they show polarity in polar pollen grains there is clear distinguished uh, polarity with the proximal and distal poles and tri radiate mark is visible as uh, we can see that here uh, this is proximal pole uh, proximal pole is that pole uh, from that side uh, the pollen grains remain attached to each other uh, that side of the pollen grain is called as proximal pole and the away side of uh, this proximal pole is called as distal pole then polar pollen grains may be isopolar heteropolar or subsepolar in isopolar pollen grain equatorial axis divide the pollen grain into two similar half so this is proximal uh, pole this is distal pole and the axis from here to here is called as polar axis and when uh, we see from this side that uh, as this uh, surface uh, this is called as equatorial view this one this is equatorial uh, view 
and this is polar axis this one pole proximal pole distal pole and this one is called as uh, equatorial view so uh, in isopolar pollen grains there is equatorial axis which divides the pollen grain into two similar halves means uh, the different structures different uh, things that are present uh, they are same at both pole then in heteropolar pollen grains exine of two poles distal and proximal are dissimilar with respect to shape ornamentation and apertural system so the aperture aperture means uh, the pores from where the pollen tube uh, comes out uh, so uh, in heteropolar one uh, both poles are dissimilar in terms of their uh, shape ornamentation and uh, presence or absence of apertural system subsepolar pollen grains are intermediate between the isopolar and heteropolar that is proximal and distal pole of the pollen grains are slightly different from each other example one pole is convex and other is less convex or having basal thread or uh, one phase so uh, in subsepolar uh, pollen grains uh, it is intermediate between uh, the isopolar and heteropolar. Uh, sometimes the proximal pole or distal pole, uh, they are uh, slightly different from each other. Uh, such type of pollen grains are called as subsepolar pollen grains. And uh, the example of subsepolar pollen grains are uh, found in family Onagrasi that, uh, that is genus Oenothera.